good afternoon, good evening, a very, very happy day to all of you and welcome back to Living Colors of Life. Today is a very, very happy day for me because number one, I found out that I'm reaching 200 subscribers and it means a lot to me, uh, a very big milestone and uh, I would like to thank each and every one of you individually for being part of my small channel and it makes me really happy when I read the comment sections and I find that a lot of people are actually uh, thanking me and, and giving me constructive feedbacks as to the things that I should do and the topics that I should talk about. It really makes my day. So thank you very much to all of you because you guys deserve it. Today I'm going to share something very important with all of you guys. Uh, I'm going to share with you my perspective uh, on the education standard and the education style, the education culture in Sweden in general. Uh, as you know that I come, I have come from Bangladesh. I came two years ago, started doing my masters in John Mars University, and it was a big cultural cultural jump for me. Uh, it took me about two to three months just to get adjusted to the things uh, here uh, in terms of education. And uh, I recently made a list of things uh, that I found to be unique and interesting. And today I'm going to share those uh, important points with all of you. Uh, the first thing which I noticed uh, after you know starting to study and everything is that the hierarchy between students and teacher is very flat. What do I mean by that? Here. You just call your teachers, your professors by their first name, middle name or last name or whatever name that they prefer. Why is it so different? Because uh, from where I come from, we always used to uh, add an extra annotation uh, like sir, madam or miss in front of their names. Uh, but here it's quite different. Here, just use their names directly. Doesn't really matter. Uh, it gives it, it's it's a bit better I guess because uh, you you can easily start a conversation just like that as if you're talking to a friend and uh, it's a bit different in my country uh, but then again I had to get used to it here and uh, yes it took time but now it's uh, completely normal so yeah keep that in mind so whenever you talk to your professor, just use, your, use their names. I know it will feel a bit uncomfortable in the beginning, but you'll get used to it. The second very, very important point is that uh, the, the level of education here is a balance between practical and theoretical knowledge. So for example, whatever that you study in theory, it is going to be the case that you will be using that in your practical life. I'll give you a very quick example. I had one course called Software Evolution where you actually had to take uh, software from a, uh, from a company which was a running software so I'm not making this up. Uh, the company owned that software and we as students were uh, in charge of implementing new features into that software. And it was quite a challenge and it gave us the right amount of uh, exposure that we needed as students as to what to expect when we leave school and when we uh, move into the professional world. As I said previously, the balance between theory and practice. The third very important point is that in Sweden, most of the time you'll be working in groups, either in pairs or in groups, most of the time in groups. So you will be involved with a lot of people. Now, what's the good side about it? The good side is that you get to have more exposure because the more people you work with, the more things you learn. So you won't be tied by your way of doing things because you will learn how other people do the same work that you are doing and it gives you more exposure, more experience and you, you get that idea of collaboration uh, at the starting stages. Uh, of your courses and it eventually makes you a more people person because at the end of the day you should always remember that when you move towards uh, uh, work in professional life you will always be working with people you'll never work alone uh, 
So getting this exposure uh, throughout the master's program, uh, I guess 80% of the time I've worked in groups. Uh, and that exposure was very important for me because now that I'm working, I have that collaborative nature inbuilt in my head already. So it gives you a very nice head start. Uh, another important finding that I found was that the culture of group work was always very professional. It, of course, it was full of fun and uh, joy, laughter and everything, but it was also very professional. So we had meetings, we had uh, you know, retrospective sessions where we talked about what went good, what didn't go good, what we should improve. So it was very professional. And this gave me a base as to what I should expect when I go uh, to uh, my professional life. Uh, it gives you a good head start, as I previously said, and uh, it emulates uh, that professional culture which uh, I think which is very common here in uh, the education culture in Sweden because uh, I've heard that even in, in bachelor courses uh, there are a lot of uh, courses which focus on group work. Uh, of course again uh, when you when you talk about uh, building that professional culture uh, punctuality is a must and uh, I and people in Sweden are very punctual so make sure that if you are uh, time bounded in a group work or in meetings or in, in anything like that always respect that uh, be punctual if you have a meeting come 10 minutes or 15 minutes before uh, the meeting even starts because it's better to come earlier than coming late okay now that we are done with group works and all those things another important point that you should know is the importance of literature now what do i mean by that whatever that you study is based on research done uh, within the field of uh, your subject so for example i have come here to study software engineering uh, you would always go through uh, research is done in your field uh, you would try to learn from the latest researches and then work around uh, the problems that you're trying to solve and it would always be uh, research based because we believe that research drives innovation and it's always it's always very good to be uh, you know aware of the things that is being done uh, in your line of work so here whenever you talk about something it's always uh, advised to have a literature backing behind what you're saying. So for example, if you say certain things, try to find out whether uh, the literature is actually supporting that. Uh, if it's not supporting that, then you can research more about it. So it becomes a research topic in itself. Another important thing that I want to talk about is plagiarism. Now, plagiarism is a very, very nasty offense and you should always refrain from doing it. It is taken very seriously in uh, in the in, in the education culture in Sweden, and it is not taken very lightly. It's taken very seriously. So whatever you do in terms of maybe studies, in terms of your assignment, in terms of your homeworks, uh, do not plagiarize someone else's work. It is fundamental, and it's absolutely crucial that you don't do that because. It is someone else's work. You just cannot use it. If you want to use it, you have to cite that person. So for example, if you copy something from Google or if you copy something from Wikipedia, reference that. that okay, this portion is being referenced. This portion of the work that I have submitted in my maybe in my assignment is something that has been said by this person or something that has been said by that person. So it's always nice to uh, talk about someone else's work but as long as you are citing that work properly everything is fine but keep that in mind don't forget that okay now let's move on to something else another really interesting find is that i believe that studying in sweden is actually less stressful now why do i say this 
in my country, for example, if I failed a course or maybe failed an exam in a course, I would have I would have to redo that course again. So I'm not talking about tests and preliminary quizzes or assignments like that. I'm talking about exams. So for example, in my country, in Bangladesh, we had like midterm exams and final exams, and those were the big two exams. And if you miss the final exam, you are in deep waters. And if you fail that, the chances of you needing to do the course again uh, was uh, very much likely. Here, for example, if you fail an exam, you just have to reset the exam. Do it again. Fail again, do it again. Fail again, do it again. So this takes a lot of stress out of the student's mind because the students are already under pressure because they have to work part-time sometimes to sustain themselves. They have to study. They have to take care of a lot of things. They have their own social life. They have their family life, etc., etc. Why do you want to burden them with exams and the pressure of failing? Here, if you fail, it's fine. Give the exam again. Done. So that actually takes a lot of stress out of you and makes you a mentally healthy person. That's what I believe. Now that you have a stressless life, let's talk about opportunities. I believe that if you study in universities in Sweden, you are more likely to to get opportunities from different countries all around Sweden. For example, uh, in, in universities, most of the time, maybe twice or thrice in a year, companies from all around Sweden come and maybe have a fair uh, where they showcase what they're doing, maybe hire some people, or maybe share some, uh, some uh, opportunities about uh, thesis work or internship work or employment or something like that and by big companies i mean big companies like maybe volvo spotify or ericsson and it, it just motivates the students you know when they see that okay that is where i want to see myself uh, you know it was it was uh, i'll give you an example when i when i went to one of those fairs where there were like what, 50 different empl uh, employing companies I would always feel very satisfied that, okay, whatever I'm studying, I'm going to be able to implement in one of these companies in the future. And that drives you, that makes you feel wanted, you know, it makes you feel happy, it makes you feel content. So if you're part of the universities, you would always feel this connection uh, with a lot of companies and most of the time. Uh, you will always have opportunities like this. This makes it much better for students to actually make that transition from studies to their professional life. Lastly, last point of this video is that, as I said about opportunities uh, from different companies and that uh, companies coming in uh, universities twice or twice in a year to have big fairs and everything this gives you another chance to build your network a very very important thing so here in sweden if you have a big network you have opportunities when you when you go into these events you expose yourself to this broad network and it actually helps you to be part of it and once you become part of it people will start noticing you so if you have a big network, the chances of you getting hired in the future is more, more likely than before. So whatever you do, do not miss these opportunities. If, ha if you have events like these in universities, go to them. It doesn't matter whether you, whether you get something out of it or not. Because I know that eventually and ultimately you will get something. Just make that step. You're feeling boring, you're not feeling good, don't worry, just go talk to people. Usually, I'll give you one, one advice. Usually, uh, in events like this, you'll find a lot of uh, companies showcasing whatever that they are doing. Go to them, talk to them, share what you want to do, share your future plan, and see if it aligns with what they want. If you have that in check, always have. Make sure that your LinkedIn account is active. Add them in LinkedIn, create your network, and once you have them in your network, then you can do whatever you want.
So these were some of the tips which I think uh, would be very, very helpful if you start utilizing them. And uh, okay, and all of them were not actually tips. Some of them were like my findings, but some of them were like my tips to you. And uh, please use them. And trust me, life will be so much easier for you. Anyways, this video is getting very long. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you have something more that you want me to talk about, please uh, add those things in the comments. I'll read through them and I'll compile them into a very nice video for all of you, all of you guys. So uh, I'll be signing off today and I hope that all of you have a very, very good day. See you, signing off.